Atamari here, folks. Welcome to Awakairangi Park in sunny Wellington for the second day of the stream coverage of our 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships Division 1. Uh, what an exciting matchup we have for you here today. We've got Group Volume 1 from Auckland facing off against Brightside from Christchurch. My name, as always, is Blair Munro. And I'm Austin Clark. And what a pleasure it is to have you in the booth here with us today, Austin. Um, to give us a bit of context and commentary for uh, the fantastic ultimate that we're about to see on display. Now, we were talking a little bit before the stream came on. Um, you've got a pretty extensive pedigree, so it's going to be really, really good to have um, just such a well-established player come in and bring some insight and be able to sort of talk us through. Plus, I imagine you've got a lot of familiarity with some of these players as well. Yeah, absolutely. These are two really talented teams uh, hailing from Christchurch and from Auckland uh, that always prove to be a, a tight matchup. It's going to come down to, I think... Uh, whichever team is is uh, on their best form today. So conditions are looking pretty stable. We don't have a lot of wind uh, at the moment, so there's not going to be too much play. A little bit uncharacteristic of Wellington, to be honest. Uh, typically at Awakairangi Park, the surrounding topography gives us a little gentle cross breeze from the bottom side of your screen moving towards the top side. Uh, we haven't got that uh, at the moment, but it's still early days. If things change, we will keep you posted on that. The lack of wind is really going to uh, let us, as viewers, see some huge long shots from both of these teams. They both have immense downfield receivers and handlers that are not afraid to throw it. So you expect to see some really exciting plays in the end zones uh, and really end zone to end zone action. And so what we have at the moment is we've got uh, Brightside on your screen at the moment playing out of the orange kit on, and then now we've got Groot playing out of the dark kit. So looks like Groot are going to be coming out on offense. So we're going to see uh, Brightside kick things off with the big pull. And that'll be Jordy Tan receiving the disc, centering it over to Lee Yo. Looks like they're sitting up in a vertical stack uh, for their offense. Brightside initiating with a match defense. And already we're seeing the big, the first big huck of the game completed. And now attacking into the end zone for the score. That's Hammond to Waller to put one on the board for Groot. Now, Groot had a fantastic performance yesterday, only giving up one loss to uh, last year's champions, Wildcats. Uh, taking the game all the way to Universe Point. Uh, it was 14-13 in favor of Groot, but uh, Wildcats do what Wildcats do. Managed to gear things up right towards the end and uh, squeak out a, a hold and a break to tip the scales in their favor. So Groot are going to be looking for a really, really strong performance today. They're not going to uh, give up basically anything as, as best they can help it. Uh, Brightside, on the other hand, had a pretty solid performance themselves. Uh, they went 2-1 and one yesterday, just giving up one game to uh, Dogma who have had a fantastic performance. We got to see them on uh, yesterday's final stream game um, over uh, Groot's counterparts, actually, Balboa. And with the format of this tournament, those uh, tight games really uh, impact how you can perform throughout the, the final stages of the tournament. Being a Swiss draw, the point differential in each game will matter. So you'll see all teams today fighting straight through to the end of the games. Lining up for the pull is Groot. That's Hugo Swinson. All right, big pull down to the center of the field, trailing off to the near side, That's and it will trail out of bounds. Now, Hugo Swinson, we saw during the warm-up, has his uh, shoulder taped up at the moment. He's a really, really confident handler. We've seen a lot of great work from him, particularly in the youth space. Um, and so does a really, really good job really anchoring an offensive line around him. Um, we'll see whether or not that uh, tape is more for aesthetic than it is for necessarily holding the man together. But it's Tavish Dempster to pick up and bring the disc to the brick mark at a point around 18 metres in front of their defensive end zone. We see Brightside setting up a side stack, looking to flood across towards the far sideline, creating a lot of openings in the midfield. They are finding excellent downfield movement, and I'm, I'm liking the quick disc movement, focusing on centering the disc, keeping it in an attacking position where they can choose to attack either side of the field. 
really aggressive defense from Groot, and it's just fantastic because what's happening there is it is forcing them to have, have take later options. They're not getting those clean shots away that they'd quite like to. Yeah. The intensity on the handler defense is going to be important. And what huge hammer goes up to the opposite side of the Beautifully end zone. Beautifully fielded. A nice cross field shot to tie the game. With Brightside answering right back. Rather than doing it in three throws or so, as Groot did, they were happy to do it in, in 10 or 12. And that's just on efficiency. <laughs> uh, we're going to get the chance to see that again. Nice quick shot through to Dom Lowe. Big hammer goes up. Wide open into space. Uh, defender was really nowhere in a, in a position to make a play. Um, and that's always tough as a defender when you're trying to defend the, a dangerous open side threat as well as that hammer break option to the uh, opposite side of the field. It's, it's just too much to take away as a defender and with no wind, that's always going to be an option. So you'll see defenses sort of adjust and hopefully tighten down on the break side throughout the game. So we're going to see Brightside bring out a big pull to initiate the third point of the game. The score is currently tied. It's anybody's match. Looks like we've got Steven Leishman taking the pull. Comes in nice and low and long. Fielded bravely by Tan. Absolutely. Quick recentering pass through to Yo. Finds and Charles Patterson on a nice undercut on that near sideline. Up line to Waller, who's always a dangerous thrower. Centering and swinging around using Yo over to Tan again. Ooh, unfortunately wasn't able to keep the, the disc in his hands through a beautiful layout. Patterson, always an athlete on the field. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's he's relatively recently come back from uh, an injury, but it clearly has not well, showed him down. Turns out big shot to the break side, into double offensive options, comes down with it beautifully, keeps his composure, and Clark throws it into the end zone for a beautiful score by Brightside in the first break of the game. And that's exactly what's necessary in a game like this. I mean, we saw particularly yesterday uh, when we had the Bomber Cats from Wellington facing off against. Oh, from Otago. Those teams were on serve throughout the entirety of the first half. They were just trading. It wasn't until 15 points through the game that we actually saw a defensive break much like that one. And those breaks are what are necessary to really widen up the game. Uh, otherwise, it essentially comes down to a coin flip as to who's going to win. Um, so they're really applying that defensive pressure um, and un an uncharacteristic turnover by Patterson, giving the distance bright side, but well done by them to be able to capitalize back and quickly move the disc back downfield uh, for a great score. Absolutely. Uh, player of Patterson's caliber, you, you honestly do expect him to come down with the uh, layout grabs, even the difficult ones. Um, just an unfortunate one on the start of the day. But he's going to, I'm sure, prove to be worth the highlight reel throughout the rest of this game. But very, very, uh, very... A lot of props to Brightside for, for taking that turnover and putting it in effectively. That's how you got to uh, take these games away from your opponents. And, and I think particularly in the early stages as well, you do tend to have that thing where you're kind of expecting the game to go relatively cleanly or relatively um, one for one for a decent period. And so when you see those turnovers early in a match, it can be really hard to not uh, get a bit overexcited and to really... Um, maybe overgas your response uh, after the turn. That's right. Now we see Groot on offense again with the same strategy, focusing on keeping that disc in the center where they can maintain attacking threats to either side. And a beautiful leading throw by Yo and a comfortable run down. Um, help me out here. Who's Rory that? Hammond. Thank you very much. The nicest man in New Zealand Ultimate. Uh, he's a smiling assassin, really. Incredibly quick, e able to run down that leading pass by Yo, very comfortably, and making the Groot offense 
look very clean. Uh, I think that's actually his second score of the game. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was Waller to Hammond as the connection in their first point as well. Uh, before we saw Brightside answer with that huge hammer from uh, from low to... I think in this case it's uh, not too early to call that a pattern. <coughs> I think we'll see many more scores, particularly by that combination. I mean, and, and why wouldn't you? Uh, I mean, it's like Lee Yo uh, does some just fantastic work in the handler space. He's so squirrely. He's so active and mobile. He's really precise with the throws. It's, it's very rare to see him put under enough pressure uh, that the throw isn't coming out more or less exactly how he wants it. Uh, and then you get a player like Hammond who's just, he's so speedy and long. And when he gets that separation, he's not going to give it up. Um, and it, it leads to some pretty comfortable scores. All right. Swinson with the pull for Groot. Just in bounds, and Brightside will look to center it immediately. Um, Dempster comes wide looking Groot, for Chin. Groot is setting, setting a bit of a pinchy defense, trying to force a disc to the outside, it looks like. Uh, you'll see the off, the, uh, the reset handlers, uh, sorry, the reset handler defense looking to narrow the lanes of throwing down the field and push the disc to the outside. Uh, it looks like that reception by Lowe is going to be called down. And we'll, be, we'll see on the replay here. So this one here comes in low. Oh, it's a hard one to call. Now, it is a self-officiated sport. It comes down to what the players agree or how they discuss uh, and what they, how they feel the rules should be resolved in an instance like that. And you'll, you'll see players chime in here. They've got their hands up with an opinion. They, they feel they, they saw it uh, clearly and can make a helpful call, so they'll offer that perspective. Now, certainly not to impugn the integrity of these group players by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but after that early break by Brightside, it's it's hard not to 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 want to see things in a way that's going to give you the opportunity to come back the other way. In this case, it looks like the call was contested, uh, could not reach an agreement, and so the disc is going to go back to the original thrower, and yep. we'll move on speedily absolutely I th and I, th I think really that's that's kind of a testament to what good spirit can be you don't have to agree you just have to recognize that you aren't going to agree and kind and of just admit that you tried yep at the end of the day everyone wants the game to keep moving swiftly and not get too bogged down in in lengthy discussions that aren't going anywhere Speak so good on the players to, to resolve that speedily speaking of being bogged down an aggressive zone defense by Groot looks to be keeping Brightside pinned down in their own end zone As you say, you were talking about a pinchy defense, almost like an arrowhead right up the front. One player aggressive on the mark, two players sitting just off the back of their shoulders, trying to stop uh, anything to really progress the disc downfield. So Brightside's going to take a while to figure out how to break through this defense. And, and in no wind, zones can be more difficult because the multiple throws that the zone off, uh, defense will force you to throw won't be quite as difficult. Right now, Brightside's doing a great job of breaking through the defense, using a lot of quick quick movement and finding those gaps in the arrowhead. We see Bruce Ng really aggressive on the mark. Brightside calling for something to develop in the downfield space, but it doesn't happen quick enough. The disc's going to snap back around to Tavish Dempster. Chung with the disc now. O'Hara calling for the up line, and it's going to get closed off by that same arrowhead, doing a great amount of work. They look to have sagged things off, they've opened things up, but they're looking to kind of expand and contract a little bit like a concertina based on where the disc is on the field. So it's a really adaptive defense. Brightside, they're, they're not struggling to maintain position, but they're struggling to make headway against the zone. And so Groot's going to be really happy with how this point's going already. If you can force your opponent to throw 60, 70 throws in a point, um, and then eventually get impatient and unfortunately overthrow his receiver down to the end zone, Groot's going to be really thrilled about this because they needed to find some purchase in this game, and a lockdown zone defense like that to earn a turnover is really, really valuable to them. 
Absolutely. I mean, Joshua Chen did have separation. He was looking to develop a deep cut. Owen Sun not too far behind him on his shoulders, but just the heat of that throw coming out, it had way too much length to really make that connection. So it's a great opportunity for Groot. We see Hugo Swinson to initiate. Having just done a lot of work on defense, it can be difficult to turn the mentality into a calm, offensive focus mentality. But let's see how Groot respond. And they have answered with a quick, move, quick movement of the disc to the opposite side of the field and ending with a nice upline throw into the end zone. If I had a dollar for every time I've seen Hugo Swinson throw an outside in forehand for a score right on the doorstep, I would have enough to buy his autograph. He doesn't sell them for much, so that's pretty good. <laughs> I'd probably have enough to buy a few spares just in case. Mm -hmm. um, so great work by Groot now to come back up one ahead of Brightside. So they've answered breaks uh, with a break of their own. So we are effectively back on serve. It's still a race to 15 in this match. We've got 90 minutes on the clock. We'll take our half time uh, once the first team reaches eight points on the scoreboard. And now Brightside's going to be doing a little bit of introspection. They're going to be thinking about how they can get through that zone, recognizing uh, that maybe they weren't expecting it and adjusting their offense to suit. And there's a really solid core of players on the line at the moment for Brightside. I mean, we've got Harrison Leach. We've got Tavish Dempster. There's uh, Captain Tony Clark there as well. Coach Cam Bennett just giving them a little bit of uh, bit of insight, maybe some external perspective, something he may have noticed from the sideline, that it can be really difficult for the players themselves to be attuned to. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I've really liked to see, particularly in this tournament and also in last week's Division 2, is where teams are able to adapt to what their opposition is doing. To be able to do that learning on the fly and make those necessary adjustments to really upset the balance of power. Absolutely. Once you, uh, once you see the teams able to adapt to your defense, you've got to make another change. So we may see Groot take the same look as it was very successful last time. And in this instance, we see a nice over the middle of the stack shot to find... That was Morgan O'Hara. O'Hara, who places the next pass straight in the end zone. Easy point out of that great over-the-stack break from Tony Clark. Absolutely. I mean, just get hitting that near sideline, being able to then quickly reset to the disc and keep everything moving. Um, you could see the flood of bright side players moving past the disc, getting faked off, and then it was that outside shot. Uh, looked to turn over a little bit early, but O'Hara had a great read on that one before being able to chip that through to Scott Edwards for the score to close out the point and keep the game tied. With the lack of wind out here, you will see players unleash some throws that uh, maybe they would or they would hesitate to throw in a little bit of wind, but a nice bladey option to get that disc there quickly was successful, and it was the right choice, and O'Hara was able to throw it into the end zone to Scott Edwards for the point. So we are 18 minutes through. The score is three apiece, which means we've been averaging about three minutes per point, uh, which might not seem like a huge amount, but it's important to recognize that that fatigue adds up pretty quickly. When you're looking at having these points where they are really aggressive on offense, but where we have seen those turnovers happen, as you mentioned, it can be difficult to make that switch from defense to offense and vice versa. Um, it really starts to add up the mental fatigue, and that just exacerbates the physical fatigue. Um, if you don't believe me, try getting out and running three minutes of shuttles uh, on a rugby field and see, see how far <laughs> you get through your times tables at the end of it. All right, group ready to receive this pull. That is going to be Pash to receive the disc, supported by Yo Early. We've got Ben Waller on that near sideline as an option, but he decides to go through to Charles Patterson instead. Patterson sending a beautiful shot down to one of the fastest people in New Zealand, Rutan. Arguably, and I, I, I always bring up Rutan's name whenever it comes to a discussion of some of the best cutters in the open division in New Zealand Ultimate. Absolutely. Uh, he's, he's, he's small, but he's a threat in the air. And if you try to stay with him, uh, you're, 
it's you're going to get torched a couple of times in the game, and uh, you're going to pretend someone else is supposed to be marking him. It's a technical thing too, right? It, yes, he's explosive. He's he's kind of wiry. He's got those those coils, springs for legs. But just in terms of technique, when you watch his acceleration, his foot turnover is so rapid. He is as dominant on beach as he is on grass, and just if, if you've ever if you've ever tried to go for a run on sand in bare feet think about how hard it is to put that force into the ground and accelerate yourself forward and i have never once seen rutan struggle with that in the slightest and bringing that same level of explosiveness and that just rate of foot turnover to, to grass he just he eats up the field it's ridiculous absolutely and to see him bring down a really crispy throw from patterson there um I think it's something we can expect to see a bit more of throughout the day. Because Patterson brought his balance quite far forward on that throw, and it came out really, really low. He did have to step f far around his mark, so props to uh, the bright side player marking him there. Got to make those throws difficult, even when you're not expecting them. Absolutely, but didn't manage to stop it happening. Not at all. All right, now bright side trying to answer. Um, Tavish Dempster, far sideline, pinned down by Josh Howe. We see Josh Chin Re calling for a reset. The They've found a gap there through the Groot defense. They've got to maintain this momentum to not allow the Groot zone to reset. Once that zone gets set, it becomes much more difficult to get through. As I'm known Groot. for saying, once a defense is out of position, it can't do its job. Once again, we're seeing a, a forehand blade to the end zone, and it does again end up with that Morgan O'Hara. This is exactly what we're hoping to see. I mean, as you mentioned, Austin, when you talked about a Swiss draw, one of the key tenets of a Swiss draw is that it should make every match as close as possible. The, the, the match that has the greatest room for a, a huge skill or capability imbalance is going to be the first one because that sort of sets up your initial seedings and, and from that point forward, you start to see um, much, much closer games. And ideally, that just continues throughout the course of a tournament until you start hitting those final brackets. Um, and this is exactly what we want to see. We want to see a game where it is 4-4, 5-5, 6-6. We want to see breaks because they're exciting, but by the same token, we want to see breaks from both sides. These are two fantastic teams, almost destined for a top four finish for both of them. Uh, and we really do want to see how their defense adapts, how they're able to generate those turns, where they're able to close, what kind of momentum they're able to create, uh, whether or not their spirits and their heads remain high despite a potential point deficit. These, these are the kind of clashes uh, that really get me excited uh, to sit down in front of a microphone and talk through what's happening. Steven Leishman with the pull again, sends it very high. They'll be happy with that one. Going deep into the end zone, a lot of hang time, fielded by Patterson. Lee Yo looking to be the first reception, but he was closed off by the aggressive chase from bright sides. So we've got Waller instead. Yo always able to get open, but unfortunately has thrown a Callahan, and Brightside will be absolutely thrilled with that. What a pickoff score. Just a fantastic defensive read, recognizing that the disc was in the air, runs through and grabs it, and his first point of contact after securing control was in the end zone, so that's going to count. Brightside finally up in the game again. The score is 5-4. As a puller, Leishman's going to be absolutely thrilled with that. That is your highest hopes as a puller. Get that disc down there. Get it deep. Get the hang time on the disc so that your entire defense, who's going to be working hard to sprint down and get in position, has that golden opportunity for one of the greatest highlights you can get in your career, a Callahan. The only point you can score without your team throwing the disc. Yoink. <laughs> Ty Lawson with a great run through for that one. Just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I mean, and it's one of those things, yes, it is an individual highlight. Ty Lawson's going to be dining out on that one for at least the rest of the weekend. Um, but it's important to recognize, as you say, um, 
Leachman with the pull, he set that up. He set that up, the aggressive chase from the rest of the team to really pressure Yo as that first option, to pressure every other option, to close off those channels for Ty Lawson to cut through and pick off that uh, disc for the score. That shows hungry defense. Absolutely. And that's how, that's how Brightside's going to get back into this game and, in fact, get ahead in this game. Let's see how Groot answers. Clark with a big pull fading towards the far sideline. Picked up by Jordy Tan to the center to Patterson. Out to the side to Pash. Lee and Yo on an upline cut. Sending it and a cruisy throw down the open side, the far side of your screen. To Rory Hammond to the surprise of very few. <laughs> We've, as I mean, you said it's it's not too early to call it a pattern, but once again, we've seen Yo shoot to Hammond. We've seen Waller shoot to Hammond. We've seen Yo shoot to Hammond again. Uh, just a fantastic, fantastic connection there. I mean, to be honest, if I had the kind of throws that some of these Groot boys have, I'd be trying to put it deep to Hammond as well. And, and though you can rely on Hammond's speed, the other thing that's showing in this game already is the um, experience of the cutters on Groot. You've got Rue and you've got Hammond just timing their cuts to perfection, uh, leaving their defenders in the dust right at that moment where you need to be turning and giving your downfield thrower the option. So you can see that experience showing up in the form of their timing on the cuts. And I think it, it's not just the timing as well. I think also the intention. Uh, quite a lot of the time, even if you've got players who have those long arms, they've really got those aggressive throws, uh, you'll see a lot of players kind of take a cut deep and then jog out the, the rest of it. They're not really testing the defense in the way that they'd like. Whereas I think even if, if, if Hammond hadn't expected that shot to come up, he probably still would have committed all the way through that cut with a lot of aggression and intention just to keep the defense on their toes. Now we see bright side. We've got a huge deep cut coming out of the handler space from Tavish. It's going to be Harrison Leach now near sideline. Dempster, far sideline by way of Edwards. And we're seeing another deep cut come out of the handler space. I wonder if that's something Brightside's been working on all season. It hasn't come off yet, but the defense is going to need to be aware of that. Nice little give-go there from Adam Chung. Putting in a lot of the work in the handler space, making the movement of the disc happen, and he sends one into the end zone for Harrison Leach. What a great score and a way for Brightside to keep uh, the offensive pressure on. As a defender playing against someone like Chung, who's quick in the handler space, his throws are crisp, his movement is unpredictable. It can be one of the toughest jobs in ultimate. Just great work to open up the field by Chung there and just putting it straight through. And again, it's one of those things where it looks like there was so much separation. Um, but think about how that separation was made. We managed to come around to have the defense out of position. So I, th I think what, we've saw, what we saw there was Chung doing a lot of work to get that disc back to the break side while his mark is trailing him, allowing that break side to be wide open, uh, throwing to a wide open receiver, cutting to the break side is a lot easier because your downfield defender is going to be marking you on the opposite side. So that nice open shot to the end zone, all a result of that movement in the handler space. Nice long pull. Yo early with Crosby. Tan providing the option on the underspace after seeing the deep threat looked off. They are not afraid to throw that, but you see these veteran players really make the right call about when to take that option. Defense looking really solid from bright side now. Not letting a lot of easy throws go off. Keeping things contested. Tan doing a great job to break the mark and get the disc centered again. Swinging it across to, to Yo. And using that disc motion, they are Punch, they have punched it in the end zone. That's Patterson for the score to tie the game yet again. Group volume one, six 
against Brightside Six. I believe that means we are still on serve. Is that true? Uh, I think that might be the case. So trading a couple of breaks, the game is remaining very close. The, both the teams are going to be looking to take that eighth point. Taking half time and a close game like this can be a, uh, well, it's, it's instrumental. There's a huge psychological advantage that comes from really putting your stamp on the end of the first half. Not to mention as well that the, pl uh, the team that starts on defense on throughout the whole game starts the second half on offense. So if you happen to line things up so that you are taking half, you're up by one at half time, and you started the game on defense, you then get the disc for free at the beginning of the second half. And with the offensive efficiency and cleanliness, the precision and aggression and intentionality that we're seeing from both of these teams, being given the disc for free at the start of the half with a one-point lead could be enough to crack open the game. Absolutely. One more time, Hugo Swinson. Leach has centered the disc to low, and now the, has moved back to Leach on the far side. Using the width of the field here and following his throw up line is Harrison Leach. Great work to recenter that disc back to Dempster, who chips through to Edwards to really start picking apart the group defense. But and we have an unfortunate, pretty tragic drop there. Brightside's offensive momentum was looking great. Um, it's going to come down to defense. When when your team experiences something like that, you got to start grinding on defense and earn that disc back. Swinson to Boardsworth, goes through Sun, finds near sideline for Mercer. Boardsworth again. Brightside looking like they need to uh, figure out their defensive strategy here. Where are they locking down? Where are they allowing the group movement to happen? And the disc goes up from Boardsworth, and it is another score for Groot. They're going to be really happy with that break. Absolutely. Back up by one for Groot, so the score is 7 6. As a team, Brightside is. Looking happy, looking positive, which is great to see. It's it's uh, important for your teammates to lift you up after something like that, and uh, they have no hesitation in doing that for Ahara. That shows a team that's ready to go for the full uh, 15, 30 points of the game, whatever we may see, 29 maybe. Owen Sun again on that near sideline with a big open fake as he looks back towards the center field really tests the defense the defense sags off and that gives him just enough window to continue up line for a great cut by Boardsworth who's then going to be able to close that point out for Groot a necessary uh, score for them there and so an and another necessary break Pull coming up now. Huge high rolling pull. Hits the ground and will be fielded by Chung. To low to Dempster. Edwards with a nice one-handed grab as he takes the trailing a edge. Shot. An excellent read by O'Hara and he brings that down easily. Using his legs to make that catch look easy he's gonna tie up the game and we have ourselves what is known in ultimate as a galaxy point so as we've said before the first team to hit eight is going to be the one that walks away with the half time uh and the, the momentum that goes with it um Groot have the opportunity for an offensive hold to take them through to the second half Brightside need a break and a convert so a turnover and a conversion or a break in order to get that first eight points so a timeout has been called uh, both of these teams probably going to look to call a specific line. They'll have something in, in mind. Uh, 
a series of, of seven players that they really know they can lean on. And it's not always going to be the best players. It's not always going to be the most athletic or the tallest. It's going to be the ones who are burning the hottest right now, whose engines are fired up, who's feeling dialed in, uh, who's, who's just ready to go. Absolutely. These kind of points, you're looking for hunger. You want your hungriest players, um, people who are ready to win their individual matchups. And, I mean, I, I've got to be honest, after that Callahan that we saw earlier from uh, Brightside, I think there's quite a few hungry players on that Brightside uh, uh, team. So it's going to be really, really hard to narrow it down to just uh, seven to hopefully close out this first half. Uh, we are seeing Clark... Uh, Leishman again, O'Hara one more time, Dempster looks to be taking the line as well. And I gotta, I've gotta give credit where it's due as well. I love watching Tavish Dempster cut. His capacity to absorb force through his deceleration is, is uncanny. Uh, the way he, he cuts his speed so quickly through his chop steps, uh, every single time you see him running, it's a masterclass. Um, and just that gorgeous mane. Floating away in the wind. Oh, that's that's half the battle. Growing, <laughs> growing that hair out. Yeah, it's all about aerodynamics, folks. Uh, in much the same way that sharks have those denticles, the little uh, sort of teeth embedded in their skin, and it creates a turbulent boundary layer to minimize water drag. Uh, Tavish Dempster's gorgeous, luscious curls do the same thing. They trap air in a bunch of eddy currents, uh, just minimize the air surface uh, resistance as he's streaking up and down the field. Yeah, don't be shocked if you see a lot of Olympic swimmers take that up in the Olympics this uh, summer. Oh, yeah. I don't think Michael Phelps shapes his legs. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and so we're going to see... One more pull to close out the half from Brightside. And Groot will be looking to put their best offensive line on. Confident throwers. A um, lot of veterans on the line you can see out there, and very, very dangerous receivers in the mix as well. Yeah. Patterson, Jordan Tan, James Crosby, Ben Waller, Pash through the layout bid, puts long looking for Hammond. Can he find him? Yes, he can, but he's not in bounds. Is he's Jordan Tan available? Not quite in the end zone, and he gets the up line. An amazing way to attack that disc by Pash. That was a very tight throw to the center of the field, but he attacked it aggressively, shutting his defender out of that option. Sends the disc long straight out of that for a nice completion to some space, leaving that final throw as a relatively easy one for Groot. I just honestly, and that's exactly it. It was the... It was the huge bid by the Brightside defender that left them just out of position for half a second that allowed him to uncork that big shot completely uncontested. Um, I think maybe with the pace of it, it was fading towards the far sideline, but as we've talked about, Rory Hammond's ability to just get into space, to read the disc, comfortably eaten up, wasn't able to get it into the end zone, but we're going to see here as well. Jordy Tan following the disc very enthusiastically. Gives a little stutter step in the end zone, just making sure he's got that communication, that eye contact with his thrower, and doing exactly what his thrower needed him to to receive that disc in the end zone, taking half, 8-7 for Groot. And just credit where credit is due. Uh, great work by Leishman there as well. Immediately peeling off Hammond. A thrower with the disc outside the end zone cannot score. So Jordan Tan was the next threat. Doing what the defense is supposed to do, peeling off and picking up his assignment as quickly as possible. Uh, there's, uh, there's the man of that point there, Pash, giving us a bit of a wave. Uh, but we will be back with you very soon for the uh, exciting, the thrilling second half of this match. The first game of the second day of our stream coverage of the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships. My name is Blair Munro. And I'm Austin Clark. We'll be back soon. He's in a great spot. Yeah. He's in a perfect spot. Yes, his massive head has blocked everything. Oh. That was a huge play, yeah. but we have seen yes. none of it. Finney, Finney, he's done it.
3, 2, 1. Welcome back, folks, to the second half of the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships Division 1. First game of our uh, streamed schedule for the second day of the tournament, we have Groot Volume 1 facing off against Brightside from Christchurch. We've got Rory Moore with the disc to pull as we see Brightside coming out on offense. We've seen some fantastic ultimate folks uh, in this first half, but we are back on serve as Dempster receives the disc. My name, as always, is Blair Munro, and I'm joined in the booth with Austin Clark. <laughs> now we've got Brightside working it down the far side of the field with a s bit of a side stack looking like. Uh, keeping that disc in the center is going to be key for them uh, because that's going to allow them to attack both sides of the field. Huge cool. layout grab by Chin. going to keep that one in hand for Brightside. Excellent recentering, and Morgan, Morgan O'Hara is going to bring that down and center it immediately to Leach. Back to O'Hara, looking for those downfield options, using the momentum of the disc in motion to create opportunities. And the disc goes up and is a huge grab. It's a Ed huge grab in the end zone by Edwards. Edwards once again. The game is tied up. We've had a fair few breaks throughout this game. The score is swinging. The pendulum of ultimate swings in all directions. But the game is currently tied. Brightside are going to come out on defense. Now, what a fantastic performance. There's some really great work. Nice and smooth offense. Um, we're seeing some aggressive match defense from, uh, from group. But it doesn't seem to be able to shut down the throws of some of these Brightside handlers. I think that's the key thing. Um, we're seeing some really, really good coverage uh, for players in motion. So look when uh, those Brightside handlers are looking to try and get into space to reset, to receive the disc and keep the stall count low. We're seeing some great coverage by Groot, but it's not. it doesn't seem like they're super aggressive when they're actually on the mark, looking to hunt for those hand blocks or, or bait for those opportunities to, um, to generate those turnovers. And it's just good to see Brightside coming out of half, clearly with maintaining their momentum, looking very confident in offense. They looked comfortable the entire time. The timing on their downfield cuts was excellent. Their handlers looked comfortable in resetting the disc uh, when needed. So that's really good to see. It's going to be really tough for Groot to apply pressure to an offense feeling that comfortable. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, now we're going to see some really, really strong offensive players here. So Rutan, Lee Yo, Ben Waller, Pash, uh, Crosby, Hammond, and Jordan Tan on the field. Fielded by Yo and immediately sent to a strong thrower in Ben Waller. Great chase down by McFarlane, but it's not going to stop Pash getting the disc on the far sideline, finding Hammond. And they are just working it up that sideline. Centering throw to Ben Waller. Excellent motion out of the handler space over to Rutan. Nice little toe touch to keep that one in bounds. And here we're seeing Brightside have an opportunity to apply some pressure to the handlers, but Groot do a great job of moving outside of that. Ooh, Crosby's going to let that disc slip through his fingers. That's, gr I mean, again, and just a little bit of pressure um, by Manang. Manang's one of my favorite defenders from the Southern Island. Uh, just watching him get really, really hungry. That disc coming out a little bit high. Crosby's not going to be able to get a hand to it. So this is a huge opportunity as we see McFarlane oh. overthrow Zemanski. And I think that that comes down to a little bit of uh, lack of confidence coming out of that reset. Knowing where your, your option is going to be is key, and um, I think Brightside will be disappointed to let that break slip through their fingers, having done a lot of good work on defense to earn it. Absolutely. I mean, we're seeing here. It's this one here. Comes in high. Might have just caught Crosby on the middle of his step, not allowing him to get his hands into the position he would have hoped for. Uh, unfortunate there. And then Pash immediately able to pick up the disc and just put a wide shot out to Yo for the score. We see it here. There's the separation. So explosive. Oh, you can tell he's a Taylor Swift fan. And so, Brightside to come out on offense now. Groot going to maintain their lead just slightly. The score is 9-8 now. But you can see both of these teams are grinding out their opportunities. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to whoever can, can earn that break and earn that turnover, rather, and then keep 
convert it into a point because it kind of doesn't do you any good unless you can finish the point. I mean, I, I love a cliche as much as the next guy, but that's what they say, right? Offense wins games, defense wins championships. And so far, we're seeing some great offense and, and really solid defense from both of these teams. But we haven't seen one team really fire up on defense to the point that they're able to start chaining together those breaks. Uh, what that means essentially is that these teams are incredibly Eight. well coordinated. As O'Hara goes, can't quite get that one in. Edwards again is another option. Sitting on the end zone, a lot of the bright side players are going to be looking to find their opportunity. And O'Hara chooses the right option. It's Edwards again. I think that's either his third or fourth of the game for Brightside, which is quite impressive. Padding out that stats line, Scott Edwards. That huck downfield came out like a pistol. No wind-up, just fired it from the hip, found O'Hara right at the toe of the end zone, and O'Hara has the composure to find the correct receiver. That's it's honestly just, this is such a fantastic display of ultimate. I mean, it's one of those things where when you think about the um, Miyamoto Musashi, right? 1645, war, <laughs> Book of the Five Rings. A, uh, a duel between great swordsmen only sees the swords clash a couple of times before we have defeat. That's really what we're seeing here. We're not seeing sword against shield and shield against sword. We're seeing two swords just darting past one another. Uh, this almost looks as much like a fencing match as it does a game of ultimate. Being advised to never cross swords where possible. <laughs> But really, that's the thing. So what's going to come down to this? If Brightside want to walk away with this game, because they are on serve, the score is tied, but so far, the way with the number of breaks that we've got, every time the score is tied, Groot are receiving the disc to start the point on offense. So until we see a really great offensive presence from either of these teams, it's going to go to Groot. That's right. So as the game progresses, you're going to see Brightside feel the pressure. They're going to have to make something happen. They won't be able to re rely on trades. A big throw goes up, and maybe this is the opportunity. But Rutan, an impenetrable receiver, boxes out his defender. He's only gone and done it, folks. The score is going to be 10-9 to Groot. And again, it's it's those kind of throws. We've, we've seen such fantastic offensive skill. Uh, far more than structure. So... Typically, when we look at defense, we're looking at a defensive structure. Whether or not that is just on that match defense, you've got players looking to help out, looking to shut down throwing lanes. In terms of offense, what we really do have is just an alignment of weapons. You've got a great downfield receiver who's going to get separation, and you've got a handler who's going to be able to put the disc up into space for them. And having a receiver like Rutan out there is such a luxury as a thrower. You can throw some real garbage up there, and that guy is going to bring it down for you. Really makes you look good. Rutan, the garbage man, he's out here cleaning things up uh, as Groot maintain their lead. <laughs> now, Austin, if you were if you were Brightside right now, you're down by one, and if you all you maintain is offensive hold after hold, you're going to lose this game. What changes are you going to make to that defensive structure to really try and give the opportunity for them to generate more of those turns? I mean, we've seen the strength of Leishman's pulls. Uh, we know they're capable of scoring. What tweaks would you make to try and, and really give them that defensive edge? I'd be looking at two options. Maybe throwing a different type of de defensive look aside from a match defense. Just give something, Groot, uh, give something else for Groot to think about. Um, see how they adjust. Outside of that, if you're not going to throw a different look, you have to be looking at winning individual matchups and finding the weak links in Groot's team, which are very few. Um, so that would be where I look to find my break as a bright side team. Mm. I mean, as, as the saying goes, you should never lose a game without throwing down a zone, but Dempster puts it up, looking for Chung, despite a huge bid from Patterson. That is a... Great individual matchup. Patterson also very quick, puts a lot of defensive pressure, but the throw was in front of Chung, and he has the speed to bring it down just out of arm's reach of Patterson. 
He's literally doing the gritty right now, folks. He's going to tie up the game. It's now 10-10, bright side to come out on defense. Are we going to see those adjustments that you talked about, Austin? That's the real question. Are they going to maybe throw down a zone? Are they going to look to be a little bit more aggressive? We saw Groot come down early on in the game with that arrowhead zone. They had those three players right at the front, headed by Bruce Ng. Uh, really aggressive, chasing around the mark and forcing the disc laterally, uh, trying to make them use the width, just stacking up throw after throw in the hope that eventually one of them will lead to an error. And here we see that huge layout by Charles Patterson, just fingertips away from the disc. I think he slid his own body length on that one. That was very impressive. <laughs> Absolutely. He's got that penguin form down. He could have, He could have gone for... 10 meters on that. Oh, yeah. I mean, couple that with his foot speed as well, and just he, he could just lay out from the front end, uh, front of the end zone all the way through the back, and no one would bat an eye. The other thing about those big plays, whether you whether you come away with the defense, uh, the defensive play or not, whether you get that turnover, seeing your teammates set their body on the line and, and just launch themselves at chest height really fires you up as a team. So I think it has value outside of earning a turnover. And here we go. Groot is, is looking deep again. The option goes Pat all the way to the end zone to Rory Hammond. Pash for Hammond yet again. A beautiful throw out to space. No trouble for Hammond to run onto that. Absolutely. I mean, I think we did see something looking a little bit zony from the bright side. I know there were a couple of players definitely uh, leaving off their assignments. But in doing so, they maybe gave up uh, an offensive Archer, like Pash, the opportunity to just send one real deep for Hammond. One thing I like that Groot has been doing here is using their downfield cutters as uh, throwing threats. All right, and we're going to see a timeout called. The game is still incredibly narrow, but while we're there, we do have a couple of updates for you from the other games being played at Awakairangu Park today. Uh, Dogma versus Wildcats currently down by four. Wildcats having taken half as the score is 8-4. Groot Balboa uh, and Oaf. So two teams that we saw on stream yesterday, both taking away narrow losses, currently tied on Galaxy Point 7-7. And then Wild Bombercats, the uh, B team from the Wellington region, facing off against Hamatron Tafri Martia from Hamilton. Currently 8-7 in favor of the side from Wellington. Uh, in terms of our women's division. Cannons from Christchurch facing off against Wellington's Nexus. Cannons up by one. Nexus having suffered a bit of an upset defeat yesterday uh, by Auckland Misfits. Coached by Ian Stewart and featuring a large number of uh, uh, developmental and um, high-performance youth uh, female players. Fast Blueberries versus Misfits. Uh, Fast Blueberries being the, the, the premier Auckland women's club. Um, down by five to Misfits as well, which is, a again, a huge upset. It looks like Misfits really gelling together as a team throughout the course of this tournament to do as well as they are. Amoeba from Wellington um, facing off against Furious Blueberries, having managed to just squeak out a halftime edge, the score being 8-7. And then Pick and Mix versus Hamatron Mahuika, uh, the score 10-3 in favor of the Mighty Mulus. And we are back. Back to the action here with the Brightside matchup against Groot Volume 1. Uh, Brightside hailing from Christchurch down in the South Island against our most northern team in Groot. Brightside ready to receive the disc, hoping to tie this game up again and give themselves a chance to uh, take that sprint to the finish of the game and take their first win of the day. Well, I don't... <sighs> I'm all too aware of the idea of the commentator's curse. Anytime you make a prediction, it's not going to come true and it's going to doom someone on the field to either a horrible mistake or a horrible failure. But, I mean, I see Morgan O'Hara and I see Scott Edwards on their offensive line for Brightside. Um, and so I think you at home could probably make a fair few predictions of your own as well. We see Lowe with Dempster and Chin in a horizontal stack, really trying to create channels in the deep O'Hara space. O'Hara getting great separation on his undercut there, just shaking that defender, leaving him in the dust, receiving the disc on the sideline, not finding his next upfield option, but very comfortable to reset it to his handlers. Just worth noting as well, Scott Edwards making a great cut in towards the deep space, had plenty of separation, 
But the aggressive Groot defense, now we're starting to see that little bit of a change up. We're seeing Groot be more active on the mark and really shut down things. That's going to be a turn. That's necessary for Groot as we see Peter Boardsworth with the disc pushing to Patterson on the far sideline. We've seen Groot be very dangerous on these transitions. And once again, they are able to take that defensive turnover and quickly turn it into a point. Groot is feeling good after that one. It's... <laughs> It's rare but not unheard of to see Hugo Swinson on the other end of a score, normally uh, doing a fantastic job working with the assist, but that great cut, getting him into the end zone with the disc, and a necessary break to really widen up the score and give Groot a little bit of a cushion. So the score is now 12-10 in this race to 15. Brightside need a hold here and a break just to keep it on serve, and they will need a second break if they want to win this game. So... As we enter the closing moments of this match, it might not seem like it, but keep in mind, we've been looking at roughly three minutes at the outside for each of the points being played so far. So we've only got a handful of points left to play in this game, a handful of minutes left to observe these two titans as they clash. Brightside now a little bit on the back foot after that great break opportunity and hold, uh, sorry, and conversion rather by Groot. So anybody's game. Absolutely. Brightside is going to have a little bit of a chat amongst themselves to see what happened on that miscommunication among handlers. Look, it happens, especially as, as pressure mounts in these games. Uh, you you, you want to do the right thing so badly, but, uh, you know, if everyone doesn't quite have the same idea, you end up with situations like that. Really, really tough to see, especially at this stage in the game. Brightside is going to have to really find some defensive pressure uh, to get a bit of a, a bit of momentum back. Ultimate is a game of swings. You, it's not uncommon to see three, four points in a row go to a single team once that defense finds their rhythm. Let's so, see how they answer. So I'm definitely not going to make any comments whatsoever regarding who's on what line, uh, probably for the rest of the game, I think, after corking that one. Terribly sorry, Brightside, but I know you guys have the strength to get it back. O'Hara on the near sideline. Marked by Kwok. The big throw goes up by O'Hara. Oh, big layout, but unfortunately the disc was just trailing too steeply. Yeah, just but a little bit much outside edge on that means it's going to peel back in towards. But looking at the angle there, that's an almost impossible catch to make at the best of times, despite a great play there by Edwards. We're seeing a little bit of switch up on the defense as Josh Howe looks to streak deep. Having the disc trapped here on the sideline is a good spot for Brightside. If they can keep him here and find that defensive pressure just like that, no call on that. And trying to be Ooh. so quick on the break means the disc came in a little bit low. O'Hara gets his body underneath it, but there's the question by he's, Boardsworth and Quark as to whether or not it was up. And we'll see it here. Ooh, that's a tight one. We'll see what the players think. Did he get his fingertips underneath that before the, the trailing edge of that disc hit the ground? Um, they're having a bit of a discussion. O'Hara is going to agree that the disc was down. That's good spirit. It's really tough to do that in, in games of this uh, magnitude. So, Especially when the margins are as close as they are. And sometimes you just need a moment to, you know, recollect and think about what actually happened, and, and you'll come to, <laughs> come to the conclusion that, yeah, unfortunately that disc was down. Boardsworth with the disc. Puts a big shot up. A big floaty. Excellent throw Looking out to space. Owen Sun. Never in doubt. Owen Sun brings that down comfortably. Absolutely spectacular throw from Peter Boardsworth. And that is going to be a yet another break for Groot. The latest stages of the game. I think this is one of the tough things, right? You typically see some really highly skilled teams uh, come into the late stages of a match. It's 10 all, it's 11 10, something like that. And yet, it's moments like this where the people who have been in this spot more often recognize what is required of them, whether it's turning up the pressure, whether it's keeping a cool head. It, it goes back to the old saying, train like you've never won, play like you've never lost. And I think that's what we're seeing from Groot here. We've seen them historically make several finals appearances um, throughout the New Zealand Ultimate Championships. I mean, they are really a premier uh, open club and so they've been in pressure situations like this uh, before. Brightside, comparatively, a newer club. I think we've only had them for a few seasons now. This is their third season, I believe. Um, and while the players as individuals 
have extensive pedigrees and huge ultimate careers behind them. It's about what happens when they gel together as a team. You might have individuals who are doing absolutely fine, but no one's a mind reader. Are they communicating to each other? Are they helping to prop each other up? Do they recognize that someone gets down a little bit, but that's just their way of firing up their engine? So that, that's, that I think, is going to be what, what comes down to it. It's, it's somehow comes down to, to personality, to experience, to, to something deeper than just your tangible ultimate skills. Absolutely. Here we have a very deep pull, a lot of hang time on that from Groot, and you will see uh, a stagnant start to the offense. It's going to take Brightside a little bit of a, a moment to keep moving, and here they've got the disc in motion over to Steven Leishman in the middle. Back to low. An inside break to Edwards to open up that, that open side and find a little bit more space. T centered to Tony Clark and out to the side to Steven Leishman. Low looking to direct traffic, maintain himself as an option, and just keep things organized in the offense. It's a crucial role to play. That's Finn Leishman McKenzie with the disc there. Oh, uh, thank you. Finn McKenzie. Uh, and a pick's been called, so avoiding contact, uh, the ability of the defender to follow. Uh, the offender is going to be impeded. Quick agreement that that did, in fact, uh, affect the play. And we'll resume. Brightside will need to get a bit of organization going here in this uh, tight space near the end zone. Can get quite tricky as you no longer have that deep option with which both teams have been relying on. A huge grab from Finn McKenzie getting long, keeping the disc inbounds, towing the line. Just a spectacular upline throw. Uh, that thrower knew exactly where his receiver wanted the disc. Austin, do you think he hid the ladder underneath that front corner cone and quickly pulled it out while we weren't watching? How did he get that high? What an insane jump and grab to pull that one down and bring it back to a two-point game. It's exactly what Brightside needed. You could see as well the way the defense was structured. They were trying to push uh, Brightside's offense towards that far sideline. And, and really... You could see that after a number of passes, they really were being forced towards that far sideline until we see number two for Brightside, Dominic Lowe, just put up that outside forehand nice and high uh, for Finn McKenzie to put it away. Yeah, it's, it's uh, great to see Lowe out there um, taking charge of the offense and finding that final throw uh, to a very, a very useful receiver in Finn McKenzie. And so again, some of those offensive powerhouses, those stalwarts that we've seen on the Groot line, Hammond, Pash, Waller, Rutan, Jordan Tan, Charles Patterson, and Lee Yo. Now, we've seen what kind of structure uh, this is going to give us. We're going to see probably Ben Waller back in the handler space, uh, Pash either in the handler space or as a midfield initiator. We're going to see Rutan, Jordan Tan, Charles Patterson, and Rory Hammond in the deep space. We're going to see Lee Yo probably look to field the disc or at least receive the centering pass. Leishman with another one of those monster pulls. Cam Bennett, their coach, was saying that putting Leishman on the D-line for Brightside uh, was one of the best decisions he feels he's made as a coach. But we go wide, find Hammond, marked by Clark, finds Pash on the far sideline. And the disc goes the up one. again. Will it be able to get, it will not stay in bounds. It trailed just over the head of Patterson. So fading out towards that near sideline is going to give the disc to Brightside and an opportunity to bring it back to a one-point game if they can hold here. This is a crucial point for Brightside. They can't afford to let this point slip away. They've earned themselves an opportunity, but this late in the game, they have to capitalize. McFarlane with the disc to initiate. We see McKenzie stretching deep early. And a, and a bit of switching on defense by Groot. That's smart play. Smart play. The disc does go up. Looking and he's got Leishman. triple coverage. And he brings it down. Leishman comes up with a huge play for right side. Finds Mc that upline to McKenzie. On the doorstep to Lawson. In. Can't get it. Right there. They're going to have to keep their composure if they reset here. McFarlane has it. He set up this entire sequence for them with that beautiful outside forehand a for great, McKenzie. A great break. And Ty Lawson catches for the point. This is a huge opportunity for Brightside. They're going to want to keep this momentum going. Ooh. 
you do love to see it in the immortal words of Monty Python. You've always got to look on the bright side of life. Ty Lawson with a phenomenal score there. Just a beautiful sequence of offensive ultimate there. We saw McFarlane put the outside forehand in to Leishman under triple coverage as well. That's why you put him on the D-line, folks. And then immediately managing to use that momentary scramble as the defense are trying to figure out who the next threat is. I think all three of them committed wholeheartedly to pulling down that block. When they couldn't do it, oh no, what's the next threat? And Leishman was able to get the disc off the sideline. Brightside's uh, defensive players were able to uh, really flood the downfield and start getting into a position to move the disc around, exploiting that weakness and find that gap in the group defense for the score. Leishman and McKenzie, two of their younger players, recently moved down to Christchurch, um, but showing off that they are uh, a valuable asset to be gained by Brightside's team. And look, throwing a throwing a deep shot into triple coverage, um, you know, not not every thrower's dream, but nobody makes big highlight play reels off a perfect throw and a perfect decision. So, uh, so we great to see Leishman uh, <laughs> contribute to the highlight reel there. We are seeing the exact same offensive line from Groot as the pull comes up by Tony Clark. Fielded by Jordan Tan. Over to Ben Waller with a bit of space in the middle. Will he send it? A great open side gainer underneath to Rory Hammond. Rue Tan for another huge gainer, and he throws a beautifully weighted pass into the far corner of the end zone, picked up by the speedy Charles Patterson. And that is going to take Groot one away from a victory. The score is now 14-12. So Groot have functionally three opportunities to get this right. Brightside cannot afford to let up the pressure at all, or they will be walking away with a loss for their first game of the second day of the tournament. Groot will be feeling good about the position they've put themselves into going towards the end of this game. Um, but you got to remember, it's not unlosable. Um, I don't expect it, but Groot is a, a very um, talented team. A lot of experience out there. Uh, they're going to need that experience to punch this game home. I mean, and, and really that's, that's what it comes down to. When we saw our final match of uh, the Division Two Open Division uh, in Christchurch just last week, we had Euphoria... Uh, putting on a fantastic performance against Nas. Uh, and again, it's one of those things where the, the experience in the finals, the experience in those pressure situations really came to the fore and had a very significant uh, impact rather on the outcome of the match. We're going to see Hugo Swinson with the pull. Outside roller. Centered to up oh, and uh, sent off to the side of the field. Brightside looking to maintain some motion. Harrison Leach with a great under, just keeping the momentum, the flow. Oh, gets a bit lucky sending it. A high release backhand over uh, the defender there. Send it again to Leach. Over to Chung. Who's Here we see a lot of small passes. Brightside has been a really big threat with these quick movements, a lot of handler centric offense mixed in with their big deep threats. O'Hara and Dempster doing some great give-go work to eat up. Dempster. That's a cross-field hammer. Yeah. He's going to do it. Pulls out the hammer. This late in the game shows a lot of confidence. Oh, uh, my goodness. And with the body slide, too. Paint me like one of your French girls, Harrison Leach. What a reception. He's going to bring it back to one. The score is 13-14. In favor of the boys in black, the men in black even. Um... Uh, <laughs> out here trying to save us from the worst scum in the universe. <laughs> but I will tell you right now that the Brightside team from Christchurch are the furthest thing from scum. Just a bunch of stand-up guys, except for Harrison Leach, who after that reception is definitely a lie-down guy. Uh, we're going to see a fantastic defensive line coming out now. It all comes down to this. We're seeing one more timeout call. This is probably going to be the last timeout of the game. We talked about the same thing that happened uh, at the end of the halftime. We were 7-7 seven, seven apiece. We called the timeout. You've got to send out the seven people who are best for the job. They're not going to necessarily be your best players. Uh, I mean, we've seen a couple of times now, we've seen an offensive line be sent out uh, by 
uh, Groot. We've seen some really, really familiar faces. We see Lee Yo, Rory Hammond, Ben Waller, uh, Pash, uh, the two Tans, Charles Patterson. And yet Brightside is still able to answer that. So even though they might be some really, really solid players, are they the right seven to send out against this hungry, aggressive Brightside defense? Brightside's done really well to put themselves in this position. They're over there thinking, we need two more. That's it. That's totally achievable, and I can't wait to see the hunger for it. But on the contrary, you've got a confident team in Groot uh, who know how to punch games into the into the dirt, and they're going to hope be, they're going to be hoping to do just that. They're not here to mess around. They're going to be sending their best line out, looking to make this a very clean, crisp offensive hold, relying on their legs to do the work, not trying to make heroic throws that give Brightside a sniff. So we're going to see Jordan Tan leave the field in favor of Crosby, but the remaining line looks pretty consistent to what we've seen so far. Here we go, Steven Leishman with the big pull again. What a dynamo, good grief. A little bit more edge on that one. Didn't give it the hang time, but Brightside do manage to get down there and apply pressure right away. Great to see from a pull. Pash wide open as Leishman's closing. It's Hammond near sideline. Up. Clark gets an overbite. Pash is doing well to find, keep himself in open spaces, not running into his defender as they poach off. He's just maintaining a space and making his defender do the work to, to actually cover him. Patterson. And we have seen it. We have seen it. Lee Yo with the final throw to Patterson. Groot has taken the game. And immediately humbles himself, trying to do a trick with the disc that put away the game. Uh, but that is a fantastic performance by both of these teams. Brightside only just out of the game, edged away from victory by the aggressive and clinical. I'd clinical, say. yeah. <laughs> Aggressive, clinical performance, so precise, so intact, just like Exhibit told us. Uh, great work by Groot to put that one away, 15-13. Just a fantastic performance to start off the second day of our tournament. Could not be prouder of both of these teams, the amazing display of ultimate they've put on for us. Uh, but until the next one, my name is Blair Monroe. And I am Austin Clark. Thank we you. will be back with you very, very soon. Bichon picks up, and they've got a short field. They've got another goal. It's tied up at 12. I can't not believe what those. I'm seeing Can here. Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Hashlikel Elverkel. Fantastic run by Julia Lerz. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the paywall. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch, and we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group, group of, of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches and video enthusiasts. And we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Alti.tv <laughs> 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 <laughs>